know you in so many ways. Uh, you know why you never gonna shake, 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 shake. Hands full, big girl got a cake. Can't hold on, matter of fact, it's a fake. I'm doing back on my cutting weight like. Say, let me wanna move this way. Say, let me wanna grab your waist. But he puts in his dad. And then it's when you receive the Holy Spirit. And the third phase is when the Spirit has you. Those are three different phases that we go through as Christians. And Paul writes these words. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Christ who loves me and gave himself for me. We need to be reminded, and Paul does remind us, that we have no obligation to the flesh. We are not free from ourselves, and let me explain, because y'all are real quiet right there. We have been adopted into God's family. This adoption means that we no longer need to go back to our former way of living or that former life. We owe nothing to the life of poverty if that's where you came from. You owe nothing to the life of sin because that's Working 
week that affirmative action was not a thing, but I want somebody to know today that it's still going to work for your good. They took away affirmative action, but God can still open up a door. If he can't open up a door, he's going to open up a window. You need to understand and trust in God in all things. Affirmative action can go if it wants to, but God still sits on the throne. It's working, it's working, it's working. It's working for my good. Every part of the enemy is working for my good. My final point is that we have freedom from separation. Amen. Romans 8, 29. Here we are told that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors in Christ. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Absolutely nothing. Paul's question is, if God is for us, Lord, have mercy. If God is for us, the God who foreknew you, the God who predestined you, the God who called you, the God who justified you, and even glorified us, if God is for us, who is against us? With God on our side, who can be against us is what the translation says our English word is. Gives the idea of possible doubt. If, 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 if. But the original language implies that there will be no doubt. The Lord God is not going to step and uh, stop until He has conformed us to the image of His Son. God is for me. It's what I know and I understand when I read that text. When Paul is asking that question, if God is for us, Yes, sir. 
separate us. Nothing can separate us. Since uh, in this life, we will suffer. But our suffering and our labor is never in vain. You need to understand, even in your suffering, even in your pain, you are still victorious. But we are more than victors. We are more than conquerors, as the word says. A conqueror is someone who goes in and fights a battle, defeating the enemy and taking the spoils. So not only will we win, but we will be wealthy in it as well. We are more than conquerors because we have received the spoils without putting up a fight. Jesus fought the battle for us a long time ago. We have received all and everything through him. A conqueror is someone who may be defeated in a substantial battle, but never can be defeated because our Lord won the battle once and for all, for all of us. That is a joy that we should live in today. A joy in knowing that he has already fought the battle for us. There is no condemnation. There is no obligation. There is no frustration. There is no separation. Martin Luther King's words in saying free at last was good for 1963. But I want to quote a songwriter, Nelson Brunson, who sang the song that I think speaks to what I'm talking about today when he declared, when he said, I am free, praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is the blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Free at last is something that we accepted in 1963. But the word of God lets me know that I am free. That I've been free. Ever since I gave my life to Christ, I am free. It doesn't matter what the government tries to find me in. I am free. It doesn't matter what my job tries to hold me to. I am free. I'm not retired like Sister Donna, but I'm still free. That is 
is the only way and the only place where you can declare, I am free. If you do not know Christ as your personal sin, you are in bondage. You are still in sin. You are still a part of the outside. You are not a part of our family. You are an outsider. So today as we do this invitation, the call is for anybody who cannot declare, cannot say, I am free. If you are bound in any way, bound to addiction of food, hear me, bound to drugs and alcohol, bound to a man or a woman, bound to earthly and worldly things, and not to the Spirit of God. Today is your day to be free. While everybody else is shooting fireworks and celebrating their independence day, today can be your independence day. Today can be the day that you become free. Today. Today. Let's stand to our feet. Trying not to get too involved, but really it's